Well, hello there, bubble friends. It's your old pal Keith from groups.com. And we are still making floppy videos. You know, yesterday I had been working on uh, a video about the step mode feature, which is like the iteration feature in um, floppy. But um, somebody asked me today, they said, hey, could you do some custom consulting on a thing? And I, I, I need to be able to sort things by like some arbitrary numeric list. And I'm like, well, I mean, like one, I'm busy with my other work. But um, at the same time, uh, you can one, do that in uh, li list shifter if you're so inclined. It is kludgy a little bit. I mean, the arbitrary sort by an arbitrary numeric list is easy because that's just in the sort function. Um, but usually a lot of times what people want to do, right, is if you've got something on it, there's something. They've got some thing that has a list type field on it, and they want to sort by the number of things that are in the list type field, right? Um, I'll illustrate what I'm talking about in just a moment, but you might be familiar with this problem. You'd be like, gosh darn, this is hard. Um, so I've got a blank page here, and we're going to talk about this feature in Floppy, which you can use like with any Floppy. Um, it's kind of it's just kind of like a little bonus feature. It's its own self-contained action um, Mostly self-contained you do have to set something in the main floppy interface, but we'll get to that um, And it's called utility count sort something It might be called utility count sort fields, but uh, colloquially I just call it utility count sort and what it does is it lets you actually do a proper count of the number of items that are in a list subfield um, and then you can optionally sort your list of things with those subfields by uh, the numbers in those subfields or you can take a list of something and sort it by some arbitrary numeric list and it's a lot easier in floppy than it is in list shifter just because list shifter is like it's very developery right it's it's like well you just do it yourself like if you're a developer you'd understand like the power of this and of course uh you know bubblers in general at least when they're starting out and once they get sort of like into the kind of medium skill level like they don't think of themselves as they don't think of themselves as web developers right bubbles a really strange product it's like it's a full stack web development you know web app development tool for people who don't do web development. It's like if I introduced a spiced rum for people that not only don't like spiced rum, but they don't drink. It's, you know, it's like who greenlit that project? I know, I know, there's a no code market, yada, yada, and it's super cool, right? But, you know, it's a, it's a tough sell. Um, and so plugins are here to fill the gap. All right, uh, enough, the wagga wagga, let's, whoops, I didn't mean to hit open an editor. Um, I was gonna, what I was going to try to do is uh, is do show topics. Here we go. Show topics. What am I supposed to talk about? Okay, I kind of introduced it. Floppy utilities count sort action. Uh, number one, why can we count fields in a repeating group, but then there's no correct each items count on a list subfield? That's a good one. That's where we're going to start. Uh, two, why is math so hard? I don't know. Uh, number three, sorting a list of something by the count of some subfield, which I just said that's the thing that this action can do for you and then we'll do sorting a list of something by some arbitrary numeric list uh which is what this person who contacted me uh was interested in doing and i'm like well you could just go my go buy my 12 dollar plug-in and do this um but then i was like well maybe i should explain how that works i'm like get the pointer out of my nose no all right um here we go okay so we're back over in edit mode in this page that is um basically blank right we're gonna we're, we're doing live bubbling like from scratch um, and the first thing I want to do is shrink my head and then talk about what what's the issue as I always say let's motivate the problem in case you don't understand what I'm going on about um, I have some things in my database that um, are called favorite things. They're the same things I've been demonstrating in other floppy videos, and I guess it's kind of nice there's some consistency there. Um, on this, on these things, these things called favorite thing, uh, there's a field called synonyms, and some of them, a, a very small number of them, uh, have synonyms on them. So let's go, let's go look, and the synonyms is a list, and it's like a list of text, 
I mean, if, if this were a real app, I would be like, those should be a list of things. Um, but for purposes of this demonstration, uh, they should be a, a list of texts. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'll show you some of these. Let's go get a repeating group. And oops, let's I grab my head instead of a repeating group. Let's go just like make a little repeating group here. Um, let's see. Let's see. What I want to do is I want to go get, let's see, do a search for favorite things, favorite things, add a new constraint where their synonyms isn't empty. Let's see what that gives us. There we go. We'll change our data type to favorite thing. Oh, now I forgot to say this. Say it with me. What is a repeating group? A repeating group is not a computer. A repeating group is a display mechanism for lists, right? Um, okay. Now, let's go set this to full list, and then I guess maybe we should report some things about our objects in here, A. Eh? So we will style ourselves a bit. Let's get a text element. It's just about my favorite thing in the world to put a text element inside of a repeating group cell. Um, and so this will be... Let's report the following. Let's do current cells, favorite things, name. Okay. And let's see. Let's, oh man, label it, Keith. Label it first. But bubble, you deleted my thing. So the name will be current cells, favorite things, name. So we have a nice name for it. And then let's see. Uh, sino, sino, synonyms. Synonyms. So this will be the synonyms that are on the thing. And so we'll insert dynamic data, current cells, favorite things, synonyms. Do you want to format them? No, it'll be fine. So they're a list of text. So these are just going to be synonym one, synonym two, synonym three, blah, 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 separated by commas, right? Um, let's see what we get in preview mode. Live bubbling. Live bubbling, doing things from scratch. We're motivating this question. Why can we count subfields in an RG, but then there's no correct each item's count on a list subfield? Ah, here we go. Okay, so um, this is very ugly right now, this repeating group. But you see, we found one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look at that. Somebody made the, oh God, I hope. Oh, it just has a single synonym. So somebody, somebody has been looking at all my pages in this project and they, they've found the page where you can like make new favorite things. But this is fine, actually. So somebody has a favorite thing called Maria, and um, they gave it a synonym of the text one, two. And then teste, I don't know what test, I guess that's test in some romance language, test, synonyms, 11. Now that's not a count, that's a, that's a text right there. That's fine, this, I'm, I'm fine. I can work with your data that you've spammed into my, my test project, whatever, bruh. Um, okay, that was funny. So um, you can see, so like different, different things that have synonyms on them have a different number of them, right? So here we've got a, um, a favorite thing called frozen shrimp and synonyms for frozen shrimp might be cold crustaceans, frozen prawns and chili critters, right? Um, so like there's three there and then there's a, a favorite thing called canned chili and it's got a synonym chili beans. That's pretty reasonable. Um, and then there's a favorite thing, pork juice, right? It has synonyms sausage squeezins and piggly moo. Um, when I'm, when I'm going to the store to pick up pork juice, I tell my wife I'm going out for a quart of Piggly Moo. Uh, and then hot sauce, this has what, maybe the most, <clears throat> excuse me, synonyms, uh, chili sauce, taco sauce, tapatio, ouchie sauce. Um, and then we've got these other two that some like ding dong, like put into my database, Maria, who is the synonym 12, maybe Maria's 12, maybe these are kids, Maria, it, it, she's the 12 year old. Uh, and then test, and the synonym is 11. Maybe test is, is the 11 year old. And if you named your kid test, like my hat is off to you. All right. Um, okay, quit farting around, Keith. Um, motivate the problem. So in our repeating group, right, we can visualize the individual synonyms. And then we, we could in fact show their, their count, right? We could show like how many there are. So let's do that. So I'm in my repeating group cell and we'll, then we'll go number of Synonyms. Synonyms. It's actually hard to type. Number of synonyms. Uh, and that would be what? Say it with me. Current cells, favorite things, synonyms, count. Right? And that's going to be 
the number of synonyms that are on this thing, right? Which, and the thing in this case, is a favorite thing. And I guess I need to fix my formatting there a bit, okay? Um, and so let's just go look at that, right? So you see, I mean, we know what we're going to see here. We're going to see three, one, two, four, one, and one, yeah? And we're reloading our page. Let's sing the page reloading song. Yeah, so okay, frozen shrimp has three synonyms. Can chili has one synonym. Pork juice has two synonyms. Hot sauce has four synonyms. Maria has one synonym. And test has one synonym. Um, now, if we wanted to sort these um, by number of synonyms count, we can't do it in vanilla bubble. I mean, I guess we could try. So like, I don't know, I don't even want to do it. Like you just, you, you can't actually do it. Um, and the reason is this. So let's do, I'm going to move this guy over, move you over a bit, make an ugly page. And let's just do a text element as I'm fond of doing just to kind of serve as a little console log. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, let's do um, that, that same search. Um, now, see, I'm already doing things the way that I wouldn't do them in real life. Like, I almost never put, uh, use my repeating group as a custom state to, like, hold the results of a search. There's a lot of other places that we could hold the results of a search. Um, but in this case, let's just, well, let's make this simple. I was trying to make this fast. Um, so we'll do insert dynamic data. We'll be, let's see, this will be repeating group. I didn't really give it a good name. Repeating group, favorite things, list of favorite things. Um each items, each items, each items, oh no, synonyms, <laughs> sorry, uh, each favorite things, synonyms, each items, synonyms, count. And now, having seen what we just saw, right, that like, okay, the count of synonyms in this cell is three, the count of this, of synonyms in this one is one, and two, and four, and etc., etc., we would think that what some repeating groups, list of things, some subfields count would be a list of numbers. Is it? Let's see. Let's refresh our page. We'll sing the refreshing our page song again. Or not. Refresh your page, refresh your page on a personal plan. It's fun to do. Um, what? You, you seeing what I'm seeing? Twelve. 12. So, as you can see, when we do repeating some list of favorite things, some subfields count, it collapses into like the sum of the counts, right? Is that right? 3 plus 1 is 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. And now we'll open our editor. Oop. Oh, damn it. I spoiled the joke. See, there I was going to say, now we'll show topics and ask, why is math hard? Uh, why is math so hard? All right. Um, so, so this is a problem, right? Because it's like in a repeating group, it looks like we can get these individual counts, but we can't get them here. Um, now, why is this so? Um, I have long felt that this is, this is a bug. And that, like, if we did, it, that there should be another option here. Like, you saw that it's just count, but it seems like there should be an each items count, but there's not. You know, if we, if we type count here, um, we can get count. There's, this is the new approximate count field, which is irrelevant in, in this context. Um, there should be an each items count, right, that would give me this, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 1, right? But there's not. Um, and I was reading some documentation actually for um, uh, a library called Lexi. That's uh, another interface to IndexedDB. That's not, it will actually someday, that will be integrated into some version of some element in um, Floppy. Um, but when I was reading the documentation for this thing, it's like, it's almost exactly like Bubble. You know, it basically, whether Bubble does this literally or not, Lexi does this literally, it like stores JavaScript objects. You know, it's not like the, it's not the concept of like tables and like related tables. And I hate it. 
when people in the forum are like, I've got a table for this and a table for that. It's like, dude, you do not have a table for those things. What you have is you have objects of different types and they're indexed and they're indexed by, by their unique IDs. And anyway, Lexi.js is like exactly the same concept, but it stores into, um, into index DB, what, you know, a, a, a form of, of browser storage. Um, and there was actually, there was a bit of the documentation I wish I had bookmarked at this point, and I couldn't find it before I did this video, but it actually explained pretty well, like, why an operation like this that's coming from the database would give you 12 rather than, like, the each items count. Uh, but still, in, and so that makes sense in, like, a pure database thing. Um, but, you know, in Bubble, like, Bubble is also doing all sorts of like JavaScript and, you know, JavaScripty actions for us. And that like, it really, it doesn't seem like it'd be hard to add an each items count that like gives us a list of numbers rather than the sum of the counts. Um, but that's just me ranting at bubble, right? That's like old man shakes fist at sky. Um, so what do you do about that? Well, you, you freaking fix it yourself. So, um, how can we get a list like that? Well, enter the count sort action. Let's um, set that up and take a look at that. Okay. Ooh, before we move on, one more thing. Now, some of you smarty pants would be like, well, why can't I get the values? Why can't I get them out of the repeating group? Well, it's true that in a sense, the repeating group just did a map operation for us and it does it the right way. Um, but again, repeating groups are a display mechanism and like any, like any sort of stuff that we display in here, it's just in the DOM. Like we don't have a handle to it. We don't have a handle to that list. And I know there's other people that have these kind of like, like interesting, but like wackadoodle, in my opinion, like plugins that like, you know, kind of reach into the DOM and pull the numbers out. And uh, I don't think they're easy to set up. It's just like you do the computation and then you display it in the repeating group. Like that's what we would do if we were building in, in like, you know, regular web development platforms, okay? So just like, get over yourself. All right, um, now, so let's go and let's set up a uh, floppy so that we can do this operation. And again, um, we don't have to be really be using floppy for anything else to like use this feature, um, but you know, floppy is one of those things, floppy, uh, is one of those things that, you know, once you have it in your page, you'll probably find a, a whole bunch of uses for it. So we'll put a floppy out in here. Um, and, um, let's see, it doesn't really matter what like storage mechanism we're using for this. Like we may or may not use this to write to storage. We could. Um, so maybe we'll anticipate that. Um, so let's like make its type of values. We'll make it it's, it's native type of values, favorite things, right? So it can hold some favorite things and its storage and its RAM list and such. Um, and then let's see, we're using local storage here. So we would have a scalar key name and a, and a list key name. Uh, I could zero these out for now if we're not going to use those automatic features. Um, and then if we're and then I took a really long break because uh, I actually had to go fix a bug. And so um, there's been a weird costume change here um, because I'm finishing this on a different day. And also my page only changed because I just kind of gone and finished this project. But um, having set up our floppy element um, to uh, just be on the page and do this, this count sort feature, we could now build a workflow. And so what I did is I created a button. You know, I, this will go faster because I mercifully uh, built this for you already. Um, I put a button on my page for the do the count sort action. Okay, we'll start edit the workflow here and we'll just like redo this. So the, the feature that can do this counting is a utility feature. So it's prefaced with utility. You could find it by typing utility and it's called count each field slash sort on a floppy. And there's only one floppy in our page, right? So it's floppy A. And um, this interface at first is maybe a little confusing because um, we have to set a type, right? And so uh, the for the fields that we want to count, right, they're on favorite things. So this type is going to be favorite thing. And now as soon as I do that, now I get these field to count entries. And this is where I can tell this action what field I want to count. Um, so... We'll just walk through this again. There's documentation for everything in the plugin, so you could go read all of this. But basically, what this thing is going to do is it's going to count the subfields in the way that we want to do it. 
Um, so for our list expression, I believe that's held in the repeating group still, right? I got to go back over here and check. Yeah, that our search is there. Okay, so we're going to say the uh, repeating group, repeating group favorite things, list of favorite things is the thing I want to do counts on. And then I can select up to three different fields that I want to count. Um, now, these are the point here is to count list fields, but you could actually count scalar fields as well. And I guess I'll show that. Um, but for the field to count, let's just do synonyms, right? And let's like show what happens. Now, if I go back to design mode here, I put a text element on the page where I can where I can show what's going on. So here's where we did that original search, or sorry, the original count, right, that shows us 12. And now, once we run the uh, count sort action, we'll have a value at floppy's utility list field counts one, and there's three of these. So we could look at count, right? So we've got utility list field counts one, two, and three. One is the one I'm using right now, and so that appears at that output. And then we can also, uh, well, we'll talk about sorting in a second. Let's just go and go back into our page. And preview mode, sing the preview mode song. Okay, let's see here. And then if I do click count sort. Aha! You'll see that this list just appeared, which is the, the field count one list. And it is in, it's got the right answer. So this is like each item's count for synonyms, right? So C3, one, two, four, one, and one. Okay, cool. Um, now that we have that list, let's say that we wanted to sort. Uh, by the number of synonyms, right? So I want to I want to sort these things so that they're sorted by the number of synonyms. What we would do is we go into our workflow. All right, and in the sorry, let's move it down so we can see it. So in the count each field sort action, there are sort options down here at the bottom, and so we can sort by one of these fields that we've counted. And so we've counted field one, so we could sort based on the value that's in one. Uh, and let's see, do you want to sort descending? Sure, let's sort descending so that it'll go like four, three, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go back into our preview mode. It's a pretty, pretty simple action, right? But it's handy because now I can do count sort and aha. And so now what happened is I computed like the number of synonyms that are in each thing and then I sorted on that number. And the sorted list appears in another one of Floppy's outputs. That is this one. Floppy A's utility count sort items list. So it's, it's the count sort items list. And then we take each item's name because these are things. And so we display my name. So that's pretty cool, right? This is, uh, this is a thing that used to be really hard. And now it's really easy. Uh, if we then wanted to... Um, you know, make this sorted list show up in a repeating group, you know, we could do something like, uh, after we do the sorting, we could just change the repeating group, right? Where is that? That's data. Is that data? No, it's elements, right? Element actions, display list, like we can force a repeating group to look at a different list. And so we would say, it's floppies, the list we want to look at in this case is floppy A's count. Let's see, utility count sort items list. Okay. Um, is there something else I wanted to show here at this point? Oh, yeah, I think so. Um, I just, well, we already saw it, but what I wanted to point out is that when we do this, the, the, both the, the numeric list and the, the items list get sorted so that when we, let's do this. Did I add that? Did I add the repeating group? Yes. I added the change to the repeating group. So now when we do this, what will happen is, is we'll see the repeating group sort over here. Ha! And now it's sorted in that direction. Um, I guess the other thing I wanted to show is that we've got this external field count. And so, you know, here we're doing it as an expression that's in the cell, right? So I've got an expression that's in the cell that says, you know, current cell's favorite thing, synonyms count. But I could also do the same thing, number of synonyms, synonyms computed by floppy. And I could just put that there. And so this is going to be, my head is in the way. This would be the expression floppy A's 
floppy A's, count, utility, uh, list field counts one, item number, current cells index, right? So it's just like, you know, put them in order. So that's how you could reference those. It, they're, again, those were computed outside the repeating group, and now we're going to display them. And so th these will be the same numbers as, as the number of synonyms uh, text field, but we'll see that in a second. All right. So you see that when we first run, we haven't computed the number of synonyms from floppy, right? These, this list is empty, but as soon as I sort, boom, uh, there you go. There's that, there's the pre-computed numbers. And so we could reference them in that way. Um, that's kind of all to show about this is like, okay, so now we can properly, now we can properly count the number of items that are in some list subfield, uh, and then we could sort on that. And so again, you saw in this, this utility uh, action itself, we can count up to three fields. We can dynamically change the one that we want to count by. Um, there's a sort by field as number uh, field here, this dynamic. So I, I had a drop down originally, but then there's also a dynamic value. And so you can use this, you, you can put uh, an integer here. And if it's one, two, or three, it'll, it'll sort by that count list. Um, if it's four, it'll sort by this thing called custom count. Uh, so we could look at that. Um, if you just, this is kind of like, uh, if you wanted in list shifter to use the sort action, you, you set a sort by list. Um, in this case, it's the same concept. This would be just any arbitrary numeric list that, you know, it, that you can get to from some expression. So for example, um, if, if it's, if, so typically this would be a field that's not on your thing, right? But, um, I don't, I don't have a good example of that here. So I'm just going to write an expression that you, you, you know, for, for the synonyms, right? So I could do like this, I'll clear that out. And then I would do, um, floppy A's, floppy A's, what is it? Uh, oh, sorry. No, it's the repeating group. Repeating group, favorite, repeating group, favorite things, list of favorite things. Um, do, 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 do. Syn oh no, I don't want synonyms. Let, let's like take its value. Okay. Cause there's a value on these thing, each item's value. Uh, and when I do that, sorry, unrehearsed, unrehearsed, um, that list that that list of numbers will show up at floppies, floppy A's, utility, utility, let's see, where is it? Utility count custom number list. So rather than being like a list field count one, two, or three, it's this one, utility count custom number list. All right, um, let's just go into run mode and make sure that that's right. Do, do, do. Reloading our page. We are reloading our page. Okay. And then we'll do count sort. Ooh, what happened? I don't know. Take a look at that. Whoopsie. We tried to we tried to sort by field one, but there's nothing there. So let's sort by the custom count. That should uh, fix that. Sorry we had to sorry we had to do this again. Let's just see what's happening here. Oh, I'm getting zeros. Well, shoot, there was a weird uh, little bug. And I lost my mic. There was a weird little bug in count sort. So I fixed that. That's fixed in 1.8.9. Um, so what were we saying? So we were saying we could do custom count. Let's like set that up again. So um, what I was doing is I had been saying that instead of counting like some field that's on the product, I could use a custom count. Um, and actually, I just... I. There was a little bug there that when there was nothing else going on and only the custom count, then the, the action would just return. We fixed that. Um, the other thing I discovered is that, that I'd sort of forgotten about is that, of course, um, bubble lists of numbers can't have, don't support empty values. Like if you, if you have nulls in there, they just sort of disappear. So I had to write some extra logic. Um, to substitute zero for those in this case. Uh, so anyway, so we set up a custom count as repeating group, favorite things, list of favorite things, each item's value. Um, 
because it's the only thing I have to hand. And some of the things in my list actually have a value and some have empty. So it gets replaced with zero now. Let's, um, let's go and refresh our page in preview mode. Gosh, I hate when you're in the middle of like, you're just trying to do like a friendly instructional video and then you're like, you tickle a bug and then you have to go fix it and you lose your place. Okay, so now when we do count sort, um, we're using this custom count list, right? Where the hot sauce has a value of 99, the canned chili is 249, pork juice is 199, Maria is one, and then there's two items here, frozen shrimp and test, that have no value associated with them. Um, so what happens in that case, if you do have a list of numbers that have, have empties, uh, we substitute zero for those, and of course the zeros are gonna fall to the bottom of the list in because we're doing um, uh, descending sort here. Uh, but anyway, just to show you that you could sort on some arbitrary list, uh, list of numbers expression as well. Um, I guess other things to know about that is if that list of numbers is not the same size as your, um, as, as your list expression, then uh, it's going to get padded with zeros. Uh, if it's longer, it gets truncated. If it's shorter, it's going to get padded with zero, okay? Um, so anyway, it's supposed to be the same size as the as the other list. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about with respect to this action? Oh, right. We could count, um, we, we can count list fields, uh, but we could also count scalar fields. And um, if, uh, like synonyms here is a list, but let's see, is there, let's see, mm, like there's a related product field. Like this field is a scalar value. Um, and I don't think that any of these items actually have related products on them. And so let's look at what happens when we count those kind of like a scalar field. What will happen is it'll uh, give us a zero for a count if it's empty. And it'll give us a one for a count if there's some value there. Let's just see if there's any values. And in fact, there are not. There are not any related product values in this particular list. Um, that's, I think that's all there is to know about this action. It also, uh, it does throw an event when it's done. So if you did want to trigger off, uh, it, it's, it's synchronous, like all the other actions in floppy. So you could, you could just continue on. You saw how we, we did the count and then we displayed the list. Like that works synchronously. There is also an event though. Um, and what is it called? It's a floppy, a floppy. Let's see. There we go. A floppy count each field sort complete. So you 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 could you could trigger some other action uh, actions based on that event here. So you color that blue to show that it goes with this event. But in this case, there's nothing I there's nothing I want to do there and nothing I want to demonstrate. But that event is there uh, for you to code off of. So there you go. That is count sort list feature. Um, that was just not, that's not one of the best demos, but I just wanted to be done with this. I'm sure this will turn up in another, in another video and we'll do it again. But, um, if you need to do this sort of thing, uh, it makes it real easy, much easier than, uh, using list shifter. All right. That's it. Happy bubbling. Have fun counting fields and sorting. Bye.